Good afternoon, family. It's your DC dude with another DC man. Did you know? So for today's DC Did You Know moment, I was asked by a Facebook friend to talk about how the DC streets are laid out. Pretty easy, right? depends so when I have a, a bus full of tourists visiting DC perhaps for the first time I'll give them a version that's easy enough you know uh, I'll, I'll just give them the basics and tell them that the street layout you know starts at the Capitol and from the Capitol extends a street in each direction right and uh, so extending east will be East Capitol Street from the Capitol. Extending north will be North Capitol Street. And extending south will be South Capitol Street, right? And and then there's one young man on the bus who's paying attention. He's like, hmm, well, Mr. 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 Craig, what happened to West Capitol Street? And I said, well, son, there is no West Capitol Street. There is the National Mall. So the National Mall extends from the, from the west side of the Capitol. What... What these Capitol Streets and the mall, the roles they play is they divide D.C. into four quadrants, right? So East Capitol Street would divide D.C., you know, Northeast and Southeast, and North Capitol divides D.C., uh, just divides Northeast from Northwest, and South Capitol Street divides Southeast from Southwest. And the mall, like I said, acts as West Capitol, and would divide uh, uh, Northwest from Southwest. And within those so, and that makes it a four quadrants. So within those quadrants, we have numbers and letter streets. So the numbers run from uh, run north and south through the city, right? And then we have letters that run east and west. And my new friend on the bus was, well, Mr. Craig, what, what happens when you run out of alphabets? We don't have all the alphabets. Aren't, all the alphabets aren't included, right? So there's no J Street, there's no X Street, there's no Y Street, or there's no Z Street. With that said, the last one will be W, right? And so from W, we start to get street names. But the names are two-syllable words. And for the longest time, I probably told way too many people <laughs> that after W is one-syllable word. Because that made sense to me. And I, and I said two-syllable words, three-syllable words. But after investigation, that's not true, right? It starts with Adams, Adams. And it ends, ends with Webster, right? So when that ends, then you go to three syllable words. Same thing, runs through the alphabet. Then what I, I didn't know for the longest time is after the three syllable words, we actually have street names um, that are named after uh, flowers and trees, right? Now tell them, they, if you went that far, then, then you need to turn back around because you, you're about to go into another state now. You're about to go Silver Spring <laughs> if, you, if you're in Northwest, you know. So anyway, uh, so then I would tell them that we have state avenues that run diagonally through the street. We have all 50. The only exceptions are Ohio is a drive and California is a street, right? But we, we have all 50 states. It's just that all of them are avenues except for Ohio and California, right? Then I'll tell them about the circles, which I... You know, I'll get an opportunity. They'll get an opportunity to see the circles because when I pick them up from their hotels and I bring them downtown, we're going to hit one or two or three circles, and I'll get an opportunity to tell them about the circles. So that's that's the quick and dirty version that I give to them, and that's all tourists really care about. Tourists didn't come here to necessarily, or they didn't they didn't pay for the tour to learn, you know, to get a whole mouthful about how the streets are running, all the nitty gritties of that, right? They you know they want to see the monuments, they want to see the mall, they want to see the museums. And, and and those type of things, right? But on that DC dude, on this channel, you, you, you're going to learn the nitty gritty. Because I got to tell you something. For somebody who's been in DC for over 50 years, and I still learn things about our streets. So there's some really fascinating things that don't fall into that neat little package of number, letters, you know, two syllable, one syllable, 
flowers and tree names of streets, right? So that's what we're going to get into. In fact, it's going to take multiple videos to do this. So today, believe it or not, we're going to do a video just on the capital streets. And when I say the capital streets, North Capitol, East Capitol, South Capitol, right? But to do this, we're going to have to hit the road. So buckle up. We're going to go on a road trip, family, and join the DC dude as we navigate the streets of DC. Okay, family, let's do this. Lock and load, buckle up. Before we go, does anybody got to take care of anything before we go? I'm just saying. I'm just saying. There's no bathroom breaks on this trip. I'm just, I'm just saying. Good afternoon, family. It's your DC dude back at the United States Capitol. This time it's not about the Capitol Dome. This time it's about how the streets are laid out in DC. So the Capitol is where it all starts. Okay family, we're gonna start our journey of the Capitol Streets with South Capitol Street. So in terms of uh, the length of South Capitol Street on this side of, of the Anacostia River, it is by far the shortest one. Um, I thought we would get a perspective of heading to the Capitol first so you can kind of get an idea of where South Capitol Street is coming from. Now, one thing about to note about South Capitol Street is it ends, well, it begins, I can only go as far as D Street. So this is D Street right in front of me with the green light and I should be moving right now. But I wanted to get the point out that theoretically, we should be able to go to A. That's where, you know, We'll get into the letter streets and number streets on the next video, but basically, before they put all those barriers up there, you know, uh, uh, it's, it's, you know, security is, is high alert around here since 9-11. Um, in any case, we it, there was a time where you can go oil to A Street, because that's where the letter streets start at the capital, they, they're uh, going east and west. So, now what we're going to do is we're going to turn around and head in the other direction of South Capitol Street, which will take us, it's a, it's a short trip. It's, it's probably less than a mile between the Capitol and the new Nat Stadium. And that's where the South Capitol Street Bridge starts. So as we pass the, the uh, Nat Stadium to our left side, we're approaching the Capitol, South Capitol Street Bridge, or what we call the Frederick Douglass Memorial Bridge. So you'll start, to, you'll see the construction. The construction, we're gonna have a brand new bridge. Um, they, well, they're building a brand new bridge right now. It's been in the process for a couple years now. And they're making a lot of progress. They have all three arches done. It's gonna be a pretty sexy bridge. There's an article on my website, offbeatpadbc.com with the article about the construction and the history of South Capitol Street Bridge. So moving on to our Capitol Street Dialogue. We're coming around, coming around, and this is where it gets weird. So if we if we make a if we make a left right now, we're gonna be on Suitland Parkway. But instead we're gonna keep straight. So already this is a different type of Capitol Street in that it's going it's winding road it um it's it's open area this open expressway looking area southwest is on our right side and southeast is on our left side again another fork in the road to the left is South Capitol Street so this is where it, this is the east side of the river what we call east of the Anacostia River and still South Capitol Street but again, it, it, the, the winding roads and things like that is not a typical style of our um, Capitol streets. And the reason being is because they all come off of the Capitol and their function, again, is to separate one quadrant from the next quadrant. So if it's, if it's a square type of grid, then it would be a straight street that separates. So we're approaching the end of, of, of the South Capitol Street. And like all the Capitol streets, you know, we're going to run out of D.C. and we're going to enter into Maryland. So now, we get to that, almost to that point with, with uh, this, with South Capitol Street. As we approach Southern Avenue. So we're crossing Southern Avenue right now. Now, D.C. on one side. Now we're in Maryland. 
So Washington DC is bordered by directional name streets. Like we just crossed Southern Avenue. Then there's an Eastern Avenue. Then there's a Western Avenue. But there's no Northern Avenue. Where Northern Avenue would be is the Potomac River. So anyway, wait a minute. Is there somebody sleeping out there? You know what? This is not a lullaby. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> Hello. Hello. Wake up. <laughs> okay, family. Just as we did with South Capitol Street, we're doing East Capitol Street the same way. We're headed towards the Capitol so we can get a good perspective on what direction it heads in and how it, how it leaves the Capitol. And then again, we're gonna turn around and go the other direction on East Capitol Street. So just as a little sidebar, flip it over here a little bit. That's the Library of Congress. Um, that's the Jefferson building of the Library of Congress that actually has, sorry, because it's named at the time as Jefferson. Because he, he, he donated his books when the uh, when DC was burnt back in 1812, uh, Library of Congress used to be in the Capitol before Library of Congress was, was existed. United States lost their collection of books, and Jefferson, I want to say donated, but he didn't. He sold them. <laughs> he, he sold United States his books. Anyway, that's a whole nother story. I don't want to dog the guy, but there's some things about Thomas Jefferson I disagree with that I read about in history. Anyway, here we are. This this is a beautiful, nice, clear view of the Capitol. So with the Capitol, there's no front door and back door or front side or back side. There is an east side and a west side. And it makes perfect sense that we're on East Capitol Street, so this is the east side of the Capitol. Also, before we turn around, one thing that is significant about East Capitol Street compared to the other capitals, North Capitol and South Capitol Street, is that you can come all the way to First Street. Well, in this case, First Street. South South Capitol Street was a letter street that we came, you know, getting close to it. It would have been A. But in terms of East Capitol Street, we can come to the very first street, which happens to be First Street. It's a number street because it's going in a different direction. It's going uh, uh, north and south. So that's one significant thing. So you can get right up on the Capitol. This is the closest you can get in terms of the capital streets. Okay, so now we're heading in the other direction. We just crossed 6th, 6th Street. And so, like I said, the East Capitol Street starts at 1st. So, coming up to 7th. So, kind of how I kind of briefly uh, described in the, in the introduction about the numbers and letters, this is a good example of how it should work. You know, so now we're crossing 8th Street. And one thing, significant about um, uh, East Capitol Street 2 is, is, is you see the row houses on each side of it so it's, it's, it's totally residential it makes sense that the area is called Capitol Hill the neighborhood is called Capitol Hill and I say the area first because it's real about area you know because it seems in my lifetime Capitol Hill keeps expanding <laughs> So, you know, I don't know how often neighborhoods expand in DC, but but Capitol Hill is it, more than just a neighborhood thing. It's a it's a I mean, keep it real. It's, it's a gentrification thing, you know. It's it's a, Capitol Hill keeps expanding more and more until the whole city's going to be called called Capitol Hill in my opinion. But anyway, that or at least on the east side of the Capitol. But that's just an opinion. So, any case, another significant thing about it is right in front of us you see a park and uh, none of the other uh, Capitol Streets do this, where we have the rectangular park that take about two by two blocks. You know what I mean? So in other words, this street right here is 11th Street. So what we're gonna do is, it's gonna take us around this rectangular park and come out on the other, other side. So we make a left here, right, and going around the park, make another left, right, quick right, get right back on East Capitol Street although it's East Capitol Street the whole time. So when I say two blocks, I mean that this is 11th. So when we come, out, when we pass this and, and you know, and get back on East Capitol Street, it'd be 13th Street. Okay, so we already made the first right and that was on to 11th Street. And then we just continue to go around the park. 
like I said, this is still East Capitol Street and we get you a better view of the park as we pass by. And it, they all have statues in the middle of them. And uh, at some point down the road, I'm gonna have a video about these rectangular parks and, and how many they are and, and, and what statues they have. Uh, if I'm not mistaken, they're typically war heroes. So, so, uh, so now you see 13th Street, we make this quick left. And we make this quick right, and that puts us right back on East Capitol Street. And it, and it still looks the same. It still has the same type of feel where it's residential homes on each side with an, uh, an occasional church or, or a school or maybe a small corner store or something like that. But for the most part, it's just basically um, residential until we get down to um, a DC institution, RFK. And actually, even before that, there's Eastern High School. There is also, I believe, a DC institution that's been around DC for quite a while. So we're up to number 17 in terms of the streets. So remember, we started at first, now we're at 17. So I'm gonna span it over a little bit to get a look at the historic um, Eastern High School. So now we're coming up to another bit of a, it's not really like the triangular park, the traditional one, but it's more like a, a curvy circular uh, rectangular thing, an area called Stadium Armory. So that's the armory over there to the right. And there's our RFK, whose days are numbered, unfortunately. Fortunately or unfortunate, it's unfortunate to me. You know, it's been around, got some memories, Seen plenty of Redskin games there. Went to concerts. See my article on offbeatenpathdc.com about RFK, about its history, and uh, and it, and its fate. I mean, you know, and get into that later. But but you know, the last team. I think the last professional teams were the soccer team, but now they have their own field called Audi Field, and it's it's down there by the uh, Nat Stadium that uh, also had their last games here. I think in like 2008, but I'm just guessing that, I'm just guessing. Uh, and we we all know the Redskins, or I'm sorry, the Washington football team moved to FedEx Field quite some time ago. So anyway, going around, going around. Now East Capitol Street is getting interesting in terms of, you know, the further we move away from the Capitol in any of the Capitol Streets, they start to not, you know, feel like the, the, the Capitol, separating DC in the quadrant thing anymore. They start curving, turning, but of course we had to, you know, the street had to go around RFK Stadium, but here we are heading to uh, East Cabo Street Bridge or Eli Whitney Bridge. So once we cross that bridge, we are in, in what uh, DC residents refer to east of the river or east of the Anacostia River. So you see the residences on the on, on the on the left and then on the right they got a recreation center over there. And uh, beyond the recreation center on the right is one of our what we call Fort Circle Parks. So this one I believe is Fort Chaplin. So it, it's a lot of green area east of the river. And I think that it's um, unfairly it's unfairly considered an undesirable place to live but this is the side of DC where I grew up in fact as we go down East Capitol Street we'll we'll pass the uh, we'll pass the neighborhood that I used to live in to the left that's maybe about two or three blocks over that um, it's it's it, it, it's on a street called Brook Street and that street I come to find out is kind of like the borderline between Capitol View neighborhood and the Deanwood neighborhood. And both of those neighborhoods can also be found on offbeatpathdc.com. I'm not trying to sell that, y'all. I'm, I'm just sharing information, you know, because I can't get too far off into other other topics because right now we're talking about the Capitol Street. But if you want to know more about the different neighborhoods in DC and things like that, East of the River, that's an all East of the River website. So we're crossing this main street here, Bennett Road, and Shrimpo, Shrimpo is over there. There's an article about that on there too, y'all. I'm, I'm keeping it real, I'm just keeping it real. 
uh, and so uh, we just crossed my main bedroom. And so now we're going more and more, not really suburban yet, you know, it's, it's, it, 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 it's uh, once upon a time, if you check out the article about Capital View, you'll find that it was, uh, it was like dirt roads <laughs> for, for you know, sometime in the 1900s. It's not even, you know, it, it, it was developed in mid, you know, or, or I could say early 1930s or something like that. So it hasn't even been 100 years. I mean, which is not a long, you know, compared to the D.C. as a whole that became Washington, D.C. in 1800. And it was decided to become D.C. in 1790. So, in relation to that, D.C. was around for over 100 years before this neighborhood over here started to, to develop. So, we're pretty much coming to the, towards the end of East Capitol Street. Now, if I bear to the right right there, that's Central Avenue. And the funny thing about that is the Central Avenue there to the right is going to show up again because as we keep straight out East Capitol Street, East Capitol Street will eventually turn into Central Avenue, which is a larger road, you know, three lanes, and, and, and it, it, you know, goes into Maryland. I mean, it is Maryland at that point, you know, because once we get to the east, the end of East Capitol Street, uh, we'll get, well, you'll see, you'll see, and, I, and I'll, I'll show you then, but once we cross the border of Southern Avenue, which is one of the borders of DC that we talked about, um, then we'll be right into Maryland. Or as we say in DC, Maryland. So just a quick sidebar, this, uh, these homes are new, relatively new, I'm not gonna say new, but relatively new in terms of, uh, cause you know, there was, I talk, I talk about it in Capital View article, neighborhood, because there was a lot of public housing. And that contributed to DC gaining the reputation of being a bad area because people were squeezed. <laughs> you know, they, they, the government exercised what's called eminent domain and, and took away a lot of homes and turned homeowners into renters. You know, if you didn't have the, if you didn't have the resources to move further out, you know, into like areas like Prince George's County to buy a home, then, you know, you were forced to live in public housing and, and you squeeze a lot of people together in a small space. And you, you know, I don't care what race you are. I don't care what race, I don't care what race you are is going to affect you in a negative way. It's kind of like that movie with Eddie Murphy uh, with Trading Places. I mean, that's, that's keeping it real. So, so over here to the left, I'm gonna turn the camera over there. It's all that open space right there. And they have new town houses that went up behind there. But all that open space used to be project homes. And even even right here on the other side uh, had three high rises between right here and the corner. <laughs> you know, high rises. So how many people you live, think live in that small space? Now we're looking at North Capitol Street. And just like with South Capitol Street, we're going to start heading in the direction of the Capitol. So you can see uh, from that perspective what North Capitol Street does. There's nothing really significant that stands out at this point about North Capitol Street. Just like South Capitol Street, people use it to, uh, to uh, head in and out of the city. So it's a main thoroughfare. It, uh, it absorbs a lot of traffic. I've been driving for a couple minutes. And uh, but it's still no Capitol Street, you know, it still separates Northeast on the left on the right side and Northwest on our left side So now uh, like I said, we have three lanes of traffic and um, For those who don't know I, I, there's a speed camera <laughs> On this because a lot of people like to open up after being in traffic in those two lanes behind me you get on these three lanes, and you still you wanna you wanna uh, get a little uh, get a little lead in your feet. So be careful of the speed cameras. But this section of North Capitol Street distinguishes it from the other streets as well because it has the, the greenery, the trees on both sides. It's like it's like going through a park right now. Also coming up on the uh, left side is the soldier's home. And a lot of people don't know, but there's a Lincoln's house 
over on the soldier's home too, where Lincoln, Abraham Lincoln used to like to come and chill because back in those days, they weren't, there weren't any cars. So, so from the capital, this is you know quite a distance if you don't have cars and the area wasn't as developed. So it was an area where he could get away from the humidity, you know, all, all the dampness of downtown in the, in the swamp-like downtown back then. So that that's just a little tidbit of information. So now as we pass as we pass by the soldiers' home and um, uh, cemetery on the on the left side, we continue out North Capitol Street, and now it doesn't feel like a Capitol Street anymore because it's starting to get the wine that. The twists and turns in the road and head into residential areas. One of my favorite parts of DC. So we've been on North Capitol for a couple more couple minutes now, and it's, it's crossing the major intersection just now uh, where uh, North Capitol Street crosses Riggs Road. So you can see the landscape, the area started get more suburban as we as we venture further out on North Capitol Street but still say still serves the same purpose you have Northeast on the right side and Northwest on our left and also this is where it gets real tricky because North Capitol Street is still North Capitol still North Capitol way up there, 5600 block. And and the blocks, you know, will go from the unit, like just two digits to 100, 200, 300. So now we're at 5700 North Capitol. So we're quite a ways from the Capitol. But what happens with North Capitol Street is you're just gonna keep straight and it turns to Blair. We just turned to Blair just now. So I'm going to turn off right here because it's no longer North Capitol Street. Same road I was driving on, but it went from North Capitol to Blair as it goes into Silver Spring, Maryland eventually. But even before it gets to uh, Silver Spring, it, it goes through a, a beautiful area of DC I love called Tacoma Park. But again, it's Blair Road, not North Capitol Street. Now, I don't know if I called it Blair Street before, but it's actually Blair Road. So right now, I'm, I'm looking for a section of where North Capitol Street I didn't know existed. So I've, I've been in D.C. over 50 years, lived in D.C. for over 50 years, but I've, in the military I've been other places, but, but I'm a D.C. resident for over 50 years. And um, I never knew this part, what I'm, what I'm about to show you now, because I thought it was over for North Capitol Street when it turned into Blair Road. But I want to, to uh, bring, show you guys this. So this is where it starts, family. It starts, this is the corner of North Capitol Street and Chillum Road. So it's out here in that area where we're close to Chillum, Maryland. And behind me, I just came off of Kansas Avenue. So here we go, we're going down North Capitol Street. I couldn't believe it. The first time I found out about it was about four or five years ago when I was doing my little Grubhub thing, uh, and I delivered some food out here, and I was like, this is not no Capitol Street. This is a side street, man. So we're going to where houses are. And I don't even know how long it is we're about to see, but I just started a couple blocks ago. Y'all been with me the whole time. I'm crossing Tuckerman. So it's a three digit, I mean three digit. It's a three syllable word in the T's and now here comes Underwood. So, when we get to that part later about the two syllable, three syllable words on, a, on, a, on another video, this is the Northeast version, you know, of, of T, U, and now, um, so now we have Underwood Place coming up. And that, that might be where it ends. It might not be a V or a W like in Northwest. Here we come again. This is North Capitol Street in front of me to make a right. Now I think the sign is just bent. Yeah, <laughs> the sign is just bent. So that's it, ladies and gentlemen. That was North Capitol Street. That was like three, four blocks of North Capitol Street that has absolutely nothing to do 
with, and I, I, I gotta look at the map. I don't think it does. You know, I had to, like I said, I had to stop and ask three people how to get to it. And I almost gave up because the Redskins game, or not the Redskins, I'm sorry, y'all. The Washington football game is about to come on in 36 minutes. So I got to be home. Peace. Family, I hope you enjoyed this video. I do look forward to seeing you again when we pick up where we left off with a conversation about DC's letter and number streets. As always, if you want to ride, just click on subscribe. <laughs>